Okay, I'm back here again to show you uh, one of the loads that's a little more challenging. Uh, I've already taken some liberties because it's going to take a while in this video, so I went ahead and rolled the bed back. I've got it all situated. Um, we're going to pretend that this car has a broken ball joint. What that means is the tire is loose and it's not connected typically. Um, so, or the control arm is broke and it's all wobbling around inside. The only way to handle these properly is to take the tire off. If you try to load it with the tire, odds are you're going to damage the car. Uh, the tire will go back into the fender well, it'll buckle the fender, um, it'll hyper extend the axle if it hasn't already done that, and pull the axle out. Uh, I would definitely get a damage waiver signed on one of these because it is it's just inherently a bad deal when the ball joint comes apart so my first order of business is to we're gonna get this jacked up and take the tire off that's what i would do first on any of these jobs ever then the second thing we'll do put the put the ball joint block underneath it we'll hook it up and we'll bring it up the bed so let me get started here and again when you're remember when you're using the jack you want to make certain that you get on a good part of the frame this is a unibody car, so usually right in there, right next to the, about a foot in, is a big part of the frame, or the unibody structure. And we're on it. That's what we wanted. Now, before I jack it all the way up, I'm gonna get a little bit of weight off of it, but I'm not gonna take it completely up. I'm just gonna get some weight off of it because I'm gonna need to break these lug nuts loose. And if I take it completely in the air, I'm not going to be able to break them loose. So, oh my, this one is really tight. Not taking them all the way off. No, I just take it off just a little bit to start off with, just to break them loose. That's the reason I didn't jack it up so the tire doesn't turn on me. Now that I've got them off, I'll get the tire off the ground, and then we'll spin them off. Now you can have, you know, nice tools to have if you're going to be a professional at this, is to get you an electric impact. Um, Milwaukee makes them, that's the kind I've got. But this is tools that you're going to have or should have right away. You know, four-way, a simple jack. Um, as, you become, as you become the professional that I hope you become, and aspire for you guys to become, you know, you'll invest in your invest in your job. You'll buy yourself your own tools. It doesn't require a lot of tools for this job, but probably one of the most expensive things is a real nice impact to make taking these lug nuts off a whole lot easier. So that's got the tire off. We'll roll the tire out of her way. And this also works for broken ball joints. This is your control arm. This is your ball joint right here. That's what comes out right here this is what comes out this piece right here that's your ball joint so we want to get that positioned in there and it looks like we're pretty much where we need to be now we'll let the car down now I will be honest we're doing this with a uh, car that doesn't have a ball joint oops that's actually broken so it actually makes demonstrating this a lot harder than if it had an actual broken ball joint because then you would be setting right there on the on the end of the control arm where the ball joint sets and this rotor and stuff would be out of your way because it's disconnected at that point uh, when the ball joint breaks so it actually makes it easier when it's actually a part than demonstrating it with a good a car that's in together so we go back up here to truck Finish tilting this bed down. Oops. And I can tell from looking at it that I know the points to hook on this Honda are behind the wheel, so I'm gonna pull out a little more wire rope. And then we'll go back here and throw our chains back. For me, we'll set these over here next to the tire for now so they're not, we'll pick all this up, 
once we get the car loaded. So we're gonna get under here. We're setting on the ball joint block so we're not concerned whether anything's gonna fall on us. Gonna find some slots in the frame there to hook to. I didn't talk about this before, but there are uh, several uh, online apps that are really nice for uh, hook points. So everybody's always like, well, what do I hook to? Well, there's too many cars for every car that I can tell you about. There's just too many out there. So you really need to do a little research on your own and get you an app on your phone that gives you all those tie down points or hook points. But a good rule of thumb is you want something structurally sound and by that I mean you want to make certain that the metal around what you're hooking to is, is beefy. You know, it's, it's not tinny, it's, it's beefy. So what we're going to do here is going to go ahead and put this car in neutral. Even though it's front wheel drive, I just don't be easier to make certain it rolls. Nothing catches as we're coming up the bed. Okay, so everything is there. Now, um, sometimes when these ball joints come up and they hit this lip right here, this is, this is rounded, so it's got a bit of a design to come up that. But sometimes, depending on the surfaces you're working on with this, um, it's not always flat. Sometimes you'll have to shove a skate here, like in front of here, to help it come up the lip. And we have the... We've shown you the skates in the equipment video, but it's just a real thin, real thin comes down to a point. It gives it something to get it coming up on the bed. So, and if you notice on this one, we're a little bit far away from the car as opposed to where I would normally go. And when I'm doing a ball joint, it's usually setting on the ground a little bit harsher than what this was. So you're usually not right at the front tires. So we're gonna go ahead and start pulling this on. Is it going to stay on my ball joint block or is it going to pop off? Yeah, that's a good example of where uh, we might have been better off on that one to use, uh, use the little uh, skate to kind of get it started easier. Oops, wrong, wrong one. Oop. But it can turn. And if it does that, and all we do to fix this, and I'm gonna show you how to fix it, just because, you know, this is real world, you know? Towing is not an exact science. I won't say not an exact science, but, you know, you're out there in the field and you gotta, you gotta come up with solutions right on the fly. So what I'm gonna show you here is, this is how you would fix this crooked block if it wasn't working out the way. Just jack it up a little bit and then let it back down on the ball joint block. And Come on over there. And now it's back straight again. But that's how you fix little things like that. Now we can come on up the bed nice and straight. And that, you know, whenever you're doing ball joints, uh, once you take the tire off, at your best, at your best opportunity to make certain you don't have any damages on it. This thing is coming a little bit tight to my side, so I'm going to turn the steering wheel a little bit because we got one tire on here. So I'm going to turn it a little bit to the right, bring it on up the bed another couple feet. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting it on. Now, when you're tying down a ball joint job, there are several different ways to look at it. I wished for every one I show you, they're all gonna be a little bit different. You're never gonna get this completely secure because this is going to be loose. 
Some of the things I've done over the years is actually tie off to the upper control arm because it's still connected, or I'll go around a spring with the strap and bring it back down. But on this demo, I'm gonna show you a lot of times, I'll go straight over top of the brake rotor and bring it back in like this. And this one is not going to give you most of your securement on this one, but it's going to be a it's going to be there for your fourth point in the event of a catastrophic, you know, wreck or something like that. The rest of them will have three more on here. But a lot of them, this is what I do because it keeps me away from the fenders and all that good stuff to avoid any damage. But again, depending on the situations, how bad it is loose, I've gone above the control arm and I've gone through a spring and fed the strap through. So those are, and again, hopefully you've picked up on that for every way that I show you, there's, there's many more ways to do it. I'm trying to teach you some very basic information so that you've got a fighting chance your first day on a job. Uh, a lot of companies don't have standardized training, especially for a guy that's just starting out. So hopefully this gives you some basis to make you safe out there and to be able to do your job with confidence because you've seen all the things that I've shown you. Okay, go around the other side. down it's not far enough to the back again if it's not right it's not right you just need to move it to where it is right because whether you want to think it whether it's your day one on the job or five years into it even at day one you're ultimately responsible you are the professional so if it isn't right and it won't be right the first time you do it because you're new at this. I've done this for many years. So take your time. If it isn't right, take your time, reposition it, and get it where you need it at. And again, if you can get time in the back lot to practice loading and unloading and tying down to experience this, I always say experience in private, or practice in private. That way when you're out there and the police are standing there and people are watching you, you're not overcome with the anxiety of dealing with people watching you. You've already practiced this. You've got it down pat and you know what you're doing. So, um, you would go ahead then and go ahead and pick your tires and everything up and store them on the vehicle. I'm not going to do that here because we're doing a demonstration of a load and unload. I just, you've got the idea what I want you to know how to is to get this car on the bed, tie it down, and then we're ready to go towing. So. I always want to kick your PTO off when you get in here. So that completes the load. And we're now ready to go transport this to the garage so that they can put his ball joint back together, get his tire back on it, and he'll be back on the road again. So I'm going to get it there, and then we're going to come back. We're going to offload it.